In this talk, Archaeological Housework, an Archaeology of Female Evocational Practice, I want to explore home as both a place of archaeological work and when home becomes an archaeological site and the past is brought indoors and inside. I wish to highlight the vitality and disciplinary neglect around the curation processes and consider the differential temporalities of evocational archaeological work practices at home. Archaeological Housework is an ongoing exhibition and research project. It began as an exercise in the salvage recovery of a heritage collection belonging to Fiona Gorman, an evocational archaeologist living on the Scottish island of Arran, and her particular love of stone. A retired art teacher and voluntary archivist in the local museum, Fiona became a dementia carer for her mother and lived herself with Alzheimer's before a move into residential care necessitated total house clearance and sale in 2017. Archaeological housework also references the work of the late American archaeologist John Giroux, who explored the gendered stereotypes within archaeology and the women at home archaeologist doing the archaeological housework. I wish to reclaim and celebrate acts of archaeological housework and recognise the contribution of avocational field workers like Fiona and her friends. And here you can see the penny she wore for her own housework, which included fines processing and lithic analysis, amongst other things. The project undertook the recording and recovery of Gorman's extensive heritage collection, which included artifacts from field walking of around 100 sites on Arran, most of it undertaken in the early 1990s and a large documentary and photographic archive and geology collection. It included the 3D recording of rooms and artifact arrangements. And our fieldwork focused on her home and a small cottage nearby, formerly occupied by her mother, used as a dedicated archaeological workroom from the late 1990s to early 2000s, before it was abandoned and eventually became forgotten through her own progressive dementia. The project was part house clearance, part excavation, with some later material gathered together ahead of recording by Fiona's close friend, Barbara, who was integral to the success of the project. And it includes a unique dementia lithic assemblage. Our own archaeological housework focused primarily on the abandoned workroom, but it recovered material from all over both homes. Fieldwork took place over 18 days across seven months. It was protracted and intermittent. There is an emotional toil to such work and the dismantling of a life. The work was undertaken by a core team of three women. And the punctuated fieldwork visits allowed for a reflexive and responsive methodology with repeat photography, a tool to aid recovery. The profusion of items was challenging and intense. The stratigraphy was that of stacked food containers and loose stone arrangements across multiple rooms. The short film extract gives a sense of the main workroom and the volume of material.
Here you can see Barbara recording loose stones and our use of photographs as an aid to help object numbering, given the time pre pressures and also the volume of material. The table where Fiona undertook her self-taught lithic analysis is a complex palimpsest. There are lines of sorting containers full of lithic debitage, piles of numbered flakes awaiting recover, recording and numbering, and rows of finds bags with catalogued pieces all neatly labelled. Copies of notes and photocopied extracts from Mesolithic site publications and correspondence with period specialists, including myself, lie on the table. The table has evidence of Fiona's lithic analysis practice with the interrupted sorting and cataloguing of a lithic assemblage from a Mesolithic scatter site on Arran, occupying most of its surface. But the later horizontal stratigraphy speaks to more creative assembly stone associated with the creation of museum display cases, as well as more abstract arrangements before abandonment and the phase of dead flies and decaying pieces of plastic. Gorman's own archive photographs became a key resource to materialize past actions. Here is the table sometime after 1999, when it was in regular use for lithic finds. The linearity of the sorting containers and systematic processing contrasts with its latest abandonment state. A different configuration of shells and images explores the ever shifting temporalities and reconfigurations of domestic finds work. In this film extract, you can see our deconstruction of the table and the pinning of finds locations directly onto the tablecloth. Fiona's care extended to meticulous numbering and labelling, using an array of different stickers from artefacts, bags, to numerous handwritten ledgers, where over-stickering reveals changing interpretations around lithic identification and re-measurement. Red circular stickers and pen dots signify special items, but others on artefacts themselves are often harder to interpret. This is a practice defined by recursive, rep repetitive reanalysis over many years and a profound familiarity with the assemblages found and cared for. A distinctly relational knowing of stone that contrasts with professional workflows. Fiona's archaeological housework comprised all stages of the curation process from washing finds back from the field in the kitchen sink to drying them all over the home and over every available surface. Found toothbrushes and lined containers evidence prior acts of cleaning and care, otherwise only seen indirectly through the object cleanliness. These are cumulative labours of attentiveness In the early 2000s, Fiona's practice expands and includes the creation of a series of over 30 ring bound folders containing landscape photographs on a suite of diverse topics using her own photographic 
archive material and other documentation. The workroom is largely abandoned following the death of her husband in 2005. And it is to the dining room table that now appears to be the main site of domestic archeological work and home the locus of activity that becomes more restricted over time. The progressive development of dementia does not diminish the attentiveness Fiona showed in her archaeological lithic assemblages. Rather, this becomes redirected. By 2013 to 14, she's receiving care at home and during this period repurposes a suite of foil containers and domestic crockery like this bowl to contain a very distinctive lithic assemblage. Repurposed frozen meal containers, of which over 15 survive, contain various household items, marine shells, and a modified flints. Some other geologies are present and pieces of sea glass, but most of these archeological finds are still within their original packaging. This later lithic assemblage comprises mostly unwashed flint gravel from the adjacent driveway, but it shows the continued tactile and sensory pleasures of living and being with stone, which continue. To conclude, the experiences of archaeologically recording the domestic work practices of one woman at home archaeologist was illuminating and insightful. It demanded both flexible and responsive methodologies and a particular attentiveness to practices of care, resulting in new materialized traces of this assemblage co-creation within the archive. Archaeological housework made visible the unseen repetitive acts of curation process and lithic analysis, highlighting the very distinctive archaeology of home. Thank you.